Hello and welcome to the first session. How to get the automation gateway up and running? Yeah, you have to clone the repository. Yeah, you need a Java installed, Java version 11 or higher. And when you have it here, then you can go to the source app directory and then just Start the Gradle WE command with build. And when it is finished, then you will have the application here in the build directory. Distributions. It is a zip file which contains everything what you need. I've unpacked it here into the app directory. The only thing what we have to change in this batch file, Windows, unfortunately, Windows has a limit of environment variables of length, and so we have to remove here everything what normally is here and we just use this asterisk for the lib directory and then you can already start it of course i forgot to mention first we have to create a config directory a config file in this directory from where you started i have created here a new one config yaml we start now with a very, very simple, basic configuration. So we just want to have an MQTT server. And then you can already start it with build distributions app bin app. And then it is already running. But of course, that is not all what we want to do. So let's add here some more configurations. Um, ah, yeah, you see already that I'm using here IntelliSense in Visual Studio Code. So it's worth to let you know how you can do this. So I'm using an extension from Red Hat. It's the YAML language support directed. You should install that extension in your Visual Studio Code. And when you have installed it, you can go to the extension settings. And somewhere here, you will find the settings file. Edit. In settings JSON and here YAML schema schemas. You should add the YAML JSON schema file which comes with the automation gateway. It is in the doc directory. Uh, in my case, I say okay, this one will only apply to config star YAML files. And when you have that. Then when you open a config a YAML file, then you can choose here on the bottom right uh, that this is a Frankenstein YAML configuration file. And with that done, you will then get automatically this IntelliSense. This is really very helpful. So our PC user should run on the board. What is the Standard for four eight four one. It should listen on the server path. Yeah, that's already almost all. We can save this and then start it again. And then we should already be able to connect to our OPC UA server. 
of Frankenstein. I prepared it here in an OPC UAE client tool. So we see here now localhost 4841, and here we see this path server. Uh, let's try to connect. Yeah, we see the OPC server is up and running. But of course, for now, it does not contain anything. So what we also want to add here now is some drivers. So let's add a, yeah, an OPC UI driver. So as an ID, we give demo one. The endpoint URL, I will copy it, paste it to here. So this is a demo server. What is often needed is to say update endpoint URL. So if the OPC server, for example, is running in a Docker container, then it typically returns IP addresses, endpoints, which cannot be resolved by by the computer where the gateway is running. So we say, OK, update the endpoint URL. So it will be the return URLs will be changed to this one, what we have given here. Yeah, security policy. In that case, it's a very simple OPC server. So we say none. We also have a second one. Okay. Let's again copy that. None. And additionally, I will now also add a WinCC uni unified system. So in that case, we have to provide the username and password. And now we have to try was connected. And now we can already publish items to our OPC UA server. So what we do here now is for the OPC server, we say, OK, um, we should get in values from the following topics. And this is now the special style of Frankenstein, how we define uh, the topics. And in that case, we say, OK, it is an OPC UA topic type. It means this one will go to an OPC UA driver. And then we specify the ID. Yeah, you see, demo one fits to this demo one. And then we can see here node, or in that case, we use path. So we use the path notation. And we say here objects, variables, and then we also use here wildcards. So that means we want to get into our OPC UA server everything that is below this variables path demo. And in the case for you, this is unified. HMR runtime, yeah, some name, everything below. So let's try to start it now. So it is connecting now to the OPC A servers, and it will browse the OPC UA server, and then it will be published to this OPC UA server. So let's take a look on our OPC UA server. And here we see now already this OPC UA or OPC node. And below we have now our three connected systems with all of the objects now yeah. and variables. Let's choose the this is a unified runtime one. Let's 
it here. Let's choose the HMI tags. One, two, three. And here I have now an Vince is a unified screen and I can change the values of the these three tags. And you see that the tags are written to our local Office case or And now we will see how we can access the same data what we have accessed before via our internal OPC server. Now with an MQDD client. So that means we can connect to the automation gateway as an MQDD client. We will subscribe to topics and we will use the same style of topics what we have used here to configure our OPC server. But the difference here is we don't have to specify it here in the config file. Well, yeah, because as a client, we connect to MQTD and we connect to topics. And then behind the scenes, the automation gateway gets the topic to which I want to subscribe and it will go to the drivers, the OPC UA servers and request that connections to the source data. And then it will be sent back to the MQTD client. Let's see how this works. I use here uh, MQTD client. I will connect to Frankenstein. And here we see the paths, uh, the topics to which we connect. The same what we have used before. And yeah, when I do a connect now and the tool subscribes to the topics, then we immediately see the values in our MQTD client. And those values are coming from the OPC UA servers connected to the automation gateway. You see here the tags of the Vincent Unified Funtime. You see here the tags, simulated values from another OPC UA server. And well, let's now try to change some tags here in the Unified screen. And you immediately see that the tag now also appears in the MQTD client. And I can also write, so publish data to the MQTD server, to our automation gateway MQTD server. And here's an example. In that case, I will use now the node ID, not the path. I can set here the value. Uh, let's set it to zero. And you immediately see that the tag in Linz is unified has been changed to zero. And of course, I can change it now back to 50. You see, it's written back to the unified system. Can I change it in the unified system? Of course, I get it here in the MQTD client. Yeah, that's the way how you can access OPC UA server sources. But not only OPC UA servers, we can also connect other MQTD brokers, and also um, devices based on PLC4X, yeah, like Modbus or other PLCs. And then you can read and write PLC values via this MQTD interface. And now we will see how we can add also MQTD source systems to our gateway. So we just have to configure here. Another driver, MQTD, we connect now a local running MQTD broker to it. So it's my home automation. Here we use raw value format, but we also connect a HiveMQ broker running in the cloud. And the special thing with the, this one is that we have here a Spark plug E message format. So that means, uh, in the hyphen Q broker, we will have topics where we have Spark plug B encoded messages, and the gateway will take this and decode the message. And then, in that case, we put these topics to our OPC UA server again into here. And of course, there we will have it uh, decoded as values, so not as a binary value. So it is already running. So let's see how this works. We have here our OPC UA client, uh, where we can take a look on our OPC UA server. 
And here we see yeah, the Connected Open CUE servers we had before. And now also the MQDT node here. And here we see our two systems, hyphen Q1 and home one. And then hyphen Q1, we see now also here the structure. And in that case, but power consumption. Yeah, just to let you know, here we have a connection to the hyphen Q broker. There you see that these uh, topics are really binary encoded. This is Spark plug B. And here in our OPC UA server, inside of the automation gateway, you see it now, of course, decoded. And same we can do with our home automation MQDD program. But in that case, we don't have Spark plug B messages. And so the only way currently is that we use the raw value as a string value. So it means we see here the structure in the MQTT server, also in our OPC UA server. But when we now take this value, for example, then we will see here this is a string in OPC UA because here yeah, we have a JSON string on it. Yeah, but with that, you can see it is also very easy to plug in MQTT brokers. And the special thing is that we can decode Spark Plug B messages and then bring it, for example, to the OPC UA server. Now I will add a PLC 4X enabled device. In that case, a Modbus device, a simulator. Um, I already have this one, but in theory, with PLC4X, you can also add any other supported device by PLC4X, yeah, like uh, various kinds of PLCs. Mm, yeah, for the Modbus, we do a polling, we do an old new comparison, so we only send values when the values are changing, so report by exception. And yeah, this is just a connection to the Modbus. Simulator, and I add here now some holding registers to my OPC UA server. So again, the OPC UA server says what he wants to have, and the data is then requested from the um, driver. So let's take a look at the OPC UA server now. It is already up and running. You see here now one more folder PLC, and here we see already our device. Opus, nodes, and then we already see the holding registers here. And yeah, here we have the simulator. I'm going to change the values now here. We also see it here in our OPC UA server. And when I change the value in my OPC UA server, then if you open here, the values are also written back to the PLC. So that's an easy way to communicate or to bring the PLC for X enabled devices to an OPC UA server. But again, also what we've seen before, you can also connect to these registers and sources via MQTD. So let's see here, we have our Frankenstein connector. And here we connect now, yeah, we take the same that we have here. And we create the MQTD connection to our gateway and we subscribe to this topic. And then when the value is changing, Here it is now. Yeah. Now we see here also the value of the output device. Value one. Let's try it again. Change it to Yeah. Now immediately get it here. So that demonstrates that we also can connect PLC devices via PLC 4X to the gateway. Now we also add a locker to our gateway. 
So a logger is a one way um, style of writing things from the devices which are connected to the automation gateway into, for example, a database. This is the typical use case of a logger, but there is also a logger for MQTT. So you can also log values into MQTT. They are very similar to the MQTT driver, but in that case, it only logs values, it writes values to the MQTT, and you cannot change it in the, in the MQTT. So it means, for example, you can take values from OPC UA and then write it to another MQTT program with a logger. In our case now here, we will show how we can log values from different systems to an influx database. There are also other databases available, like the IoT database. And very important nowadays, also uh, Apache Kafka. So you can log the values from OPC UA servers, from your PC 4X drivers, and from MQDT brokers to Apache Kafka. Yeah, here's the configuration, very simple in that case. Uh, influx database running here. I just give the database name, no username, no password in that case. And here I define what tags I want to log into the database. Yeah. Uh, we log now the values from hyphen Q, just to remember that hyphen Q broker in the cloud. We have Spark Block D encoded messages. And of course, in the database, we will write the value, so not the binary thing, we will write the decoded value. And some values from an OPC UA server, in that case from our Intis Unified, and the values from a Modbus device. So this is already running. I will now use uh, Grafana to visualize that. I have here my test database. I create a new query. I select the mes mes measurement. Uh, for example, this hyphen Q. And then I select here the tag. And then we see here the tags with the same style that we have in MQT in the topic of this namespace. Yeah, let's select the input that uh, fill it with the previous. Then we already see the values which have been locked by the gateway. I can also select here. Um, our oh, Windows is unified, OPC UA stuff. Can select again a tag. Let's use the HMI tag. This one has not changed it. I can change it now in the runtime. Let's do here an auto refresh every five seconds. And then we can try to change the values in the screen. If you see the values will be written to the influx database, and we get it here in the Grafana dashboard. And now we can also try to write some values to a Modbus device. One, two. Three, four, and then I can select here the Opus. Yeah, it is now already here. Yeah, values have have been changed. Now they are written via the gateway to an influx database. Then I can select it here. Yeah, I have only the holding register one for now. And then I see the values here. What I have set. In the Modbus, we will see it here now in the Influx database. So, as you can see, it is also very easy to log the values from different sources which are connected to the gateway into databases also in a lot of different databases, but also in stream, into streaming platforms like Apache Kafka. Uh, 